Now these are the shots that I always get once we've finished the car for an epic intro. Just so you can see, I know the workshop in the background, some really cool stage, nice slow motion. Um, but we've got to do it right. That's why I'm going to do this right now. Check it out. a little bit differently more of a vlog style i'm at the back with rich this is another y62 supercharger we're going to be checking in on rich throughout the build of it he'll explain in some detail about what he's doing what he's modifying and we'll just keep on checking in at the moment in on the dyno it's already had a uni chip fitted to it uni x fitted to it we've done the before power run how much power did it make roughly bud Oh, 150, 160, I think, with the unit chip on it. I'll chuck it up in a sec. It will pop up right now. Um, and now, what are you doing? Uh, essentially the same thing you always do when we get into a supercharger kit. Done a few before. I know it needs to be removed. So I start by stripping the bare essentials, get the front off it for the unit cooler, the inlet manifold off. Oh, that's ace. Well, this customer had a factory airbox. He doesn't have a snorkel on it. I'm going to give him a call. I'm going to see if I can uh, hook him up with uh, one of the AFE intakes on it. And this also is also done for us. He's also got a set of... Casey's fitted to it as well. So it's already got a full exhaust system on it. Can't wait to get stuck in this project. I just wanted to take a minute. Everyone obviously sees the products once it's on the car. Not everyone gets to see how it comes to us. So bear with me one sec, I'm trying to. This is um, this is a packing, this is a box from Harrow. So it comes in this hard plastic box, which is, yeah, pretty impressive. Always order a spare belt, the blower pulley as well. Electronics that we need for it. Intercooler down here. We've got the water pump in there as well. So Rich will go over all of this sort of stuff. It's uh, definitely, you know, a really good piece of kit. It's pretty decent. Nice, good solid size. Where's that go, bud? Basically sits here, behind the grill. Wow, and you're smashing this out time-wise. Yeah, these aren't too bad, though. Yeah, pretty, pretty efficient. So, Richo, yeah, man. thought I'd just check up on you and how we're going with it all. The heat exchanger's on, as you yep. can see, behind the grill. So that's all sorted. Horns have been remounted. Um, if you stick your camera down there, you'll see that I've just fitted the water pump for the inner cooler kit underneath the battery tray. Uh, I'll now connect the hose from the heat exchanger to the pump, which is the inlet to the pump. So basically the way it goes is it returns from the supercharger where it'll be heated. The water will be heated through the heat exchanger so it comes out colder. Yep. Uh, into the pump and the pump then pumps it back into the brick on the supercharger which we'll get to when I'm fitting the supercharger. And they work really well. They're very efficient, they're very effective. Uh, it's pretty rare now even on the turbo applications that you don't see manufacturers using a form of water to air heat exchange. Most of we do stacks of AMGs and even the AMGs are the same. They're turbocharged and yeah, that's they true. use a water to heat exchanger so. I'll, um, I'll keep on, I'll let you plot along. Yeah. I'll, uh, Go and make some more phone calls, I guess. Or answer the phone. I don't even know what I do. I just thought I'd sneak out to see where Richo's up to. He's gone out to help a customer at the moment, but um, he's got the auxiliary pulleys ready to set all of that up. I can't wait to um, show you what's actually involved when we do the auxiliary injectors on this. So it's, it's pretty cool. And, I, and we'll run through the boost control again. I'll try and see if I can get some, some shots of it, you know, when it's actually at the back and when we're uh, welding it all up for you. And also the way that the, uh, the boost control unit itself, the way that's all plumbed up. So it's some pretty interesting stuff. You got any feedback or questions at all? You know, this is really, I'm trying to be a little bit more relaxed. Just, you know, comment, like, comment, share, you know, give us some feedback. Richard's got the front of the blower snout off. And that's where the uh, the modification for the auxiliary injectors begins. Just um, wanted to check in, Richo. How you going, mate? Good, mate. Just about to, uh... I've just taken the snout off the supercharger, but the fab boys have got a little bit of a backlog at the moment, so I'm going to fit the rest of the supercharger. Yep. And uh, and then bang the snout on once they've got the boss on it for the extra injectors. A pretty handy and nifty way that we've come up of getting fuel control where uh, where other people have struggled. Um, but in saying that, there's plenty of people around Oz now doing the same thing using the Unichip as well. So. Yeah, heaps, heaps, and in fact, it's getting more popular. We're actually signing up more Unichip agents so they can have the fuel control over the supercharger on the Y62. It doesn't matter whether it's a 2650 or a 2300, the fuel control is the fuel control at the end of the day. That's right, and it's not limited to just this either. We use it on everything. We run extra injectors on AMGs, the Hyundai's behind me, everything that, are, you know, that people are finding limitations with what aftermarket products are available. We, uh, there's usually a way or a, a reason for us to get around it. Explain to us. Okay, so this is one of our dual twin injector fuel upgrades for the Y62 Harrop blower kit. Yep. 
um, to give us enough fuel to stick a bit more boost and standard in them. Yep. So obviously we need to uh, we machine all these in house, and um, we just got to weld them onto the the Harrop inlet. So we'll weld that on, and um, then Rich can finish installing it, and we'll have it on the dyno shortly and make some power. I've just gone and checked out Robbie at the back. He's nearly finished welding up blower snout. I think it's done, it's just been coated at the moment. Is it? Mm. Uh, it's got the same prickle coating as the supercharger. That's it. How good. We really are at the point here in the stick where it's going to go back on the dyno. Uh, we still got to do all the wiring, the map sensor, the injectors. So there's still a little bit of time to go before it the dyno, but we're getting there. The mechanical part of it's done, but there's just as uh, involved with the electrical side. Getting ahead of myself. Mm. I knew it. Always. <laughs> I'll check back in, Richo. Obviously, that's the drive for the supercharger there, yep. off the pulley. So there's three holes that the three located the three keys on the uh, on the charger pulley line up with. So he's going to make sure that they line up correctly, or else uh, you'll either break it or you won't have any drive. Yep. There's a fair bit of interference, so you do sometimes have to put a little bit of uh, elbow grease in, but that's basically on, and that's what it's going to look like. So. Good? Yeah. How could it not be good? <laughs> hey guys, thanks for checking out episode one. I've got episode two dropping tomorrow night. Uh, that's going to go over boost. That's going to go over the fuel control in a little bit more detail. And I asked Rich the questions to break it down and explain exactly how we do it, plus the dyno churn and our road test. So tomorrow night, check it out.